So in this video, we're going to take apart this circuit and rebuild it, but ultimately it is a bi-stable mode, 555 timer. Some sources call it a flip-flop circuit. And what we have here is, right now I know the output is low because that is how I wired these LEDs. The blue LED will be on when the output is low. So we want to go low to high, so we need to press the push button that goes to pin 2 right there and we will look at how these uh, buttons work but in case now you can see the output is holding steady so it's stable the only time it changes is if I do something in this case press the switch there so it's by stable it is stable in two modes I have to do something to change the output so we completely cleared everything the switches are off to the side but the 555 timer is not connected to anything we have to connect power to the 555 timer so pin number one is the ground pin and pin number eight is the VCC pin so that's the positive side of the power supply that's just an abbreviated way of saying that so we will take an orange jumper which fits perfectly from the red rail to the closest spot there I have the power supply off right now and we will take a gray jumper which is a little long for this side not too bad though but uh, we will plug it in right there and so that is what will provide power to the output and it's not as important in this circuit but uh, recent videos I've been doing there are three resistive areas and tapped in between the two of them the 555 timer looks at one-third and two-thirds of the power supply voltage so that doesn't really come into play in this video but I will mention that quickly so now these uh, switches so what these switches do actually no let's go with the pins so we have the power pin one power pin eight so pin number six that is the threshold pin so what this pin is doing it is waiting for the 555 timer to get to two-thirds or above and then it changes the output we do not want that in the circuit so it's that two-thirds or above that we want to avoid and so we easily do that just by connecting it directly to the negative rail and that will keep less than two-thirds of the power supply voltage to that pin because it's zero so it's the lowest voltage in the circuit so we can never get up to two-thirds of the power supply voltage so basically that disables that pin recent videos I was doing we disabled pin 5 this one or pin 4 this one we're disabling pin 6 the threshold pin so now let's get to triggering this so first off pin 2 and pin 4 so pin 2 is the trigger pin and then pin 4 is the reset pin and so they basically set the output to the opposite of the other one and it sits there until something tells the 555 timer to go to the other one so we have switches and these little ones they pop in and out of the board pretty easy and uh, so you might even have to push them back in once in a while but they're connected on one side to the negative rail it doesn't matter if we connect that side or that side these two are connected so basically all of the uh, dots here and all the dots there are electrically connected they're separated top to bottom and so I have white jumpers that fit this distance pretty nicely so that's pin 4 the reset and pin 2 the trigger so I will plop these in and I'm going to keep it close to to there and uh, I'll do the same thing with this one up here so this is not the best way to wire it but it will work so pin 2 so we will close the switch and we'll connect that pin to ground when we close the switch so both of them they react when there's a low voltage so we want to prevent accidental low voltages so we're gonna take 10 kilo ohm resistors they're called pull up resistors they hold the voltage at uh, this part of the circuit there this is a node it's all one connect conductive area and so 
we have the node here, comes to a switch, comes to a resistor, comes to pin 2. And so anywhere along the line, we can put a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So that's got to go to the positive rail. And basically what that does, we have a connection to the positive rail. Once we close the switch though, that goes directly to the negative rail. So any current going through there gets sucked right to that rail. All the, oh, all the uh, trigger here, pin number two sees, is that it's connected to ground when the switch is closed. Otherwise, it has a, a weak, but still a five volt connection to the positive rail. We're going to do the same thing with the reset. So as you can see here, that wire there from two jumps over the resistor wire there to the switch and uh, to pin four. So we will make that connection just down here. And we could set it right up there, it doesn't matter. Anywhere along that conductive path. And that will give us a high signal to both pin 4 and pin 2 until we press, press them. And uh, pin 4 is active low, pin 2 is active low. They don't do anything until they get a low signal. So now, we're getting a little cramped here. And so I decided that I will take a yellow jumper and we'll go to the output. So output is right here and we can zoom in a little and I am going to do the uh, blue and red so now the output on the schematic is to the right I'm gonna build it to the left it does not matter how you build it as long as you make the connections where it tells you to make the connections so I'm gonna extend the uh, output of the 555 timer and uh, I'll still kind of stay close but pin 3 is the output and so we have that jumper there now we're gonna add a couple of LEDs so I want to use a blue one to indicate when the output is more negative for the blue LED to conduct it needs to head towards the positive side of the power supply we're gonna need a resistor to limit current so it doesn't matter what comes first the resistor or the LED as long as the LED is biased properly. So we need it forward biased when the output is low. So the short pin, the cathode, is going to go right where that jumper is because it connects directly to the output. The line lead, the anode, we're going to go up one row and I think I'll set it over here one spot, leave room for the red one. So we got that there. Now the blue LEDs, I should have put that in parentheses, they are a lot brighter than the red ones so if I was using two red ones I would just have 220 ohms protecting both of them the blue ones are brighter I'm going to use a higher value resistor a 1 kilo ohm so it's going to cut the current about to uh, one fourth of the current but the LED is still going to be probably even a little brighter than the red one so we put that to the positive rail and then put it to the anode, the long lead of the LED. If that doesn't light up when it's supposed to, odds are the LED is probably backwards. And uh, so that's just one tip. If your LEDs aren't lighting up, good chance they're backwards. So now the red one. So we want the anode, the side of the schematic symbol, to the output because we want this to light up when the output is more positive. And then that will be in relationship to ground. When the output's negative, it will be at the same voltage as ground. And then when the output's positive, it will be about the same voltage as the positive rail. That's why it goes two different directions depending on what the output is. So the long lead, the anode, we put to the output. Short lead, the cathode, I'm going to go down one spot. And this is one reason why I really space this out like this because uh, these components start blocking each other after a while. So in any case, Red LED doesn't get as bright, so I'm going to use a lower value resistor, 220 ohms, and you can go higher with these resistors. The LEDs just won't be as bright as they are with uh, what we got here, but uh, 220 ohms is plenty to protect an LED from 5 volts, but you can go higher. That's no big deal. You can even go a little bit lower, but uh, then you're starting to get close to the maximum wattage rating, so let's uh, kind of scoot that down so it doesn't block anything. So that's going to the negative rail, and then we're going to go to the uh, cathode, short lead of the LED, which is right there. Now, we will turn the power on, and I don't know how uh, often the output will start off low, 
but it is starting off low. Maybe it's meant to always start off low when you turn the power on until it is changed. But here you can see that the output is low and I wrote on here which switch, I don't have it memorized, I have to push to set it from low to high and that's the one that goes to pin 2. The, that's the one up there. And then to set it back low I have to press the switch that sends actually a low signal, so 0 volts to pin 4. Right there. So now these inputs you can see they're going directly to the uh, negative rail and that's because they don't accept any current just a tiny bit of leakage but for the most part nothing so all it does is look at the voltage so we have a resistor here but when the switch is open it's still connected to the positive rail it doesn't need any current to measure that voltage and so a lot more resistance is here this is a tiny bit of resistance and so basically the whole 5 volts builds up but then we close the switch current will flow through the resistor but then get sucked right to ground all it knows is that it's connected directly to ground and uh, that's how it detects the low signal but in any case depending on which one gets a signal the output changes otherwise this is wired because the uh, threshold is held low it responds when it gets a high signal so basically we ignore it as long as it's connected to the negative rail and then basically we ignore these two pins until they get connected to the negative rail to get a low signal so as long as they're held high nothing will happen it is important though that we hold them high so let's see here I'll take out the uh, resistors are in we can still get it to to flip but there we go I was able to falsely trigger it just by getting my body close to there also the reset button so that's why we have to hold it high because as you can see I just falsely triggered it and and uh, it should not have switched until I hit the, the button but it did and the reset button is the more powerful or the reset pin is the more powerful of the two so that sets the LED blue that one sets it red so I'll hold this down you see that it's blue as long as the reset pin is pressed so it overwhelms uh, pin number two or anything else that might switch the uh, state from what the reset does the reset overwhelms it so in any case hopefully uh, this video helped you thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video